All right, everybody, we're back. Brand new Cabral concept. Excited to share with you the 10 signs your lymphatic system may need support. So many people were just never taught about what the lymphatic system is. What is your lymph? Well, believe it or not, it's as important as your blood. It really is. The blood, as we know, is where it circulates through our body, gets pumped through our heart. We get oxygen brought. We have our nutrients, red blood cells, all the great things. But little do we know, and we're basically never taught, that there's more lymph in our body than there is blood, and that lymph is what helps support our immune system. It's what helps cleans the waste from all of our tissues, right? So we're going to get into it today that it will share with you. We'll let you know how important this lymphatic system is to your body and really what we can do in order to be able to keep it healthy, keep it, keep it safe, and keep it clean. So let's hit the top 10 right now as to the signs that your lymphatic system may need support. And then at the very end, I'm just going to give you three simple ways to be able to move that lymph and clean it so that you can enjoy more abundance of all of these 10 signs. All right, so the first one is this, it is nasal congestion. If you have a stuffy nose or post nasal drip and you don't know why, it's just chronic. You wanna look at your lymphatic system again, which is just that, it's the fluid that is intertwined and in essentially the matrix of all of your cells and tissues that takes that waste away, that has white blood cells within it that can help to fight viruses and bacteria and so much more, and then remove all that from your body. So essentially it all flows all the way down from your feet, up through your neck and face, and it moves always towards essentially the heart or more towards what's called the, the upper left side, upper left quadrant of your shoulder or chest. And then it flows down through the body and is eliminated as waste. So our job then eventually, as we share with you, is to get that lymph moving but it can become stagnant over time through inflammation, poor diet, and so much more. I'll do a separate podcast on that, but let's go over the signs right now. So the first one, post-nasal drip, nasal congestion. The second is weight gain, but very specifically, weight gain through water retention, puffiness, inflammation. You basically feel swollen. So when you look at your body, it looks softer not so much just because it's maybe subcutaneous body fat, but you literally, you can kind of like press in your skin, you feel puffy, you feel swollen. That is a dead giveaway that your lymphatic system is stagnant. That means the, the, unlike your blood, which is always moving, right? Well, your lymph system is on a manual pump. It moves when you move as long as it's not thick, sludge-like, or congested. Remember, one other interesting thing about your lymphatic system is essentially it's a one-way street. So it's only going to be flowing essentially in one direction. And there are um, almost like if you've ever taken a boat out from a smaller lake or river into the ocean, there are these things called locks and it does not allow backfilling. So it doesn't allow your, it doesn't allow it to move in two different directions, which is good and bad. But th those lymph locks can get all blocked up. Okay. So the third one is this frequent illness. If you find yourself just getting sick every month or every even every two months, too often, it's too often to get that sick and have that type of illness. So poor immunity, frequent illness, absolutely a sign of stagnant or blocked up lymphatic system. The fourth is acne and skin-based rashes. People get mystery skin rashes or they start to get adult-based acne, right? Like, why is this? Is it hormonal? Maybe. It could be. But is it just waste? It's just stuck inside that lymphatic system and it's getting backed up. The fifth one, fatigue and sluggishness. If you are day after day feeling just run down and that like it's just difficult to move through life, right? Your brain is weighed down. Your body's weighed down. You don't want to even think about exercising. Most likely, you have get, you've got stagnant lymphatic uh, system. It's just not draining. Okay, the sixth one, I've done a bunch of shows just on this, and I will link up those shows at stephencabral.com slash 3156. Cellulite is fixable. It is removable through natural-based measures. No fancy machines, expensive procedures, or surgery needed. But one of the hallmarks of cellulite is an underlying root cause with lymphatic stagnation. And that word, I just keep saying stagnation, means that it's stuck. 
that is not moving as it should be. And again, in just a few moments, I'll be giving you three simple ways to get it moving. The seventh one is digestive issues, specifically bloating and constipation. Why this is so important is that you can have poor nutrient absorption because of stagnant lymph. And what all this is tied to is essentially something called gut-associated lymphoid tissue, GALT. So there's that word, lymphoid, lymph, lymphatic. Around your digestive tract, right? So when you look at your digestive tract, and I can grab my model here for you, you have about 20 feet, 21 feet of small intestine. This is essentially at your belly button and below. And then you have a colon that's about five to six feet long that is on the right side of your body where your oblique is and comes across about an inch or two above your belly button and then down the left side of your body. So ascending, transverse, and descending colon. Well, around all of this, which essentially is everything that people often mistake as their stomach, but it's not their stomach, it's actually all their intestines, the stomach's above that, is their intestines and around those 26 plus feet of intestine is the gut-associated lymphoid tissue. When that is stagnant from leaky gut, taking all the pathogens and yeast waste and uh, amino acids that aren't broken down well enough, it gets congested with that and you feel bloated. You, your body visibly after a meal gets more puffy, gets more swollen a couple hours after a meal. That is not uncommon with people with stagnant lymph, specifically around the gut. Now, keep in mind, that becomes then systemic. Inflammation around the gut, that's a big area, 26 feet of intestine. Well, that inflammation then can permeate across the whole body. So, we have to understand is that we need to fix the gut to then fix that lymph system as well. We use the big three gut bundle to test for food sensitivities, to test for candida overgrowth, and to test for parasites and bacteria and H. pylori as well. You can do that, um, or you can just run the candida metabolic and vitamins test, which gives you a good overall picture as well. And then if you find that you may have an imbalance, you probably can go into complete something called the CBO protocol, which helps to balance candida and bacteria. So that is how you start there, because then you want to heal and seal the gut. We use a CBO finisher for that, which just stands for candida bacteria optimizer. And then you don't have as much spilling out of the gut, or none at all that shouldn't be there. So then that lymphatic system can then begin to drain back down. It's not always taking on water, right? Like a sinking ship. So really important. All right, the eighth one is varicose veins. So varicose veins, usually you start to see them maybe behind the knees, down through the calves, is absolutely a circulatory issue and oftentimes associated with blocked up lymph. The ninth one is allergies. Absolutely associated with allergies. So whether it's your sinuses that we talked about in the very beginning, nasal congestion, or it is swollen lymph nodes under the armpits or starting to get itchy skin or histamine reactions in terms of, um, as I said, the even on yesterday's show or two days ago show, itchy legs, all of these can be allergy-based related. You begin to fill up that rain barrel. Now you've got more mast cells in the body. You're degranulating more histamines in your body, and you're reacting to almost everything, right? You're, you're just more sensitive to your environment, and that can be stagnant lymph. All right, number 10 is this, poor circulation in terms of cold hands and cold feet. Yes, cold hands and cold feet could be high levels of stress and cortisol, like in Raynaud's. It could be low thyroid, uh, hypothyroidism, such as, well, low, <laughs> low thyroid. That's what the hypothyroidism, uh, which can lead to cold hands and feet. So it can be other things, but same with stagnant lymph. Can't move, can't move things to the down to the extremities, the fingers, right? As the blood starts to get thinner and thinner into smaller capillaries in those hands and feet and even the nose, well, it can start to be feel more cold than the rest of the body. So those are our top 10. I will list them at stephencabral.com slash 3156. But I also want to share with you right now, what are three simple things that you can do in order to unlock that lymph, to thin it out, to allow it to flow faster and more freely? The first one is this. You want to move your body. But believe it or not, 
walking alone, which is tremendous, is helpful, but it does not activate the lymph as well as, believe it or not, something like jumping on a trampoline or a little home rebounder. And I have that small home rebounder at stephencabral.com slash resources. There's about a hundred different companies there. It's not, I don't own any of these companies. Um, jump up and down on it. Great. Or you say, I don't have a rebounder. I don't want to uh, purchase a rebounder. No problem. Small little jumps as if you're doing imaginary jump rope or a real jump rope. All of that, believe it or not, from the ground up, that ground force, start out small, little jumps. You only need to jump like an inch off the floor. By doing these small jumps and coming back down every time, it begins to move that lymph. So great thing to do, a minute to three minutes of rebounding or just pretend jump roping. That's a great way to be able to start your day as well, okay? Yeah, you can get ready for the day, all the things that you need to do. One to three minutes of that, two to three times a day, absolutely fantastic. All right, so the second way beyond the moving the body, believe it or not, this is one of the only ways that you can move your lymph without you actually moving because lymphatic system, the lymphatic system works on a manual-based pump. That means you pumping the body, moving the body, but sauna and heat activate the lymphatic system and the circulation in general. So by going into a hot sauna for 20 to 30 minutes or so, it enables you to move that lymph, circulate your blood, and detox faster. Now, what does detoxing really mean? Well, in this particular case, if we go back to our model Walter here, your body is detoxifying by moving the lymph through, as well as the blood, your liver. And so with your liver doing the main detoxification, okay, heat helps to, yes, um, move and expand the vessels to allow the blood to flow faster. Kidneys as a secondary detox option. Lungs to a small degree, but your skin now gets to take over to help with detoxification and take the pressure off of the liver and kidneys, and it does that through sweating. So when you sweat, you begin to then move mold heavy metals like mercury and aluminum and other pathogens and toxins through the skin, right? So it moves through your skin and comes out with those toxins. And again, this has been scientifically measured. So you can actually see what's coming out when you sweat. And so you obviously, after a sauna, you towel off, you get all of that off your body. And now you've alleviated some of that lymphatic burden as well as even some of the blood. So one of the great things about sauna is that you get a cardiovascular effect almost like a brisk walk, zone one, almost to zone two, right around there, depending on where your heart rate gets to, and it helps with detoxification in the lymph. So sauna, that's one of the many reasons why it reduces all-cause mortality. It is phenomenal for the body. The third way, and I would say in conjunction with those two, is a functional medicine detox. It's not a juice cleanse, it's not specialty teas, it's not an intestinal cleanse, it's actually meant to improve drainage. Drainage with the liver, with the kidneys, and the overall lymphatic system. So it uses specific herbs, and also antioxidants and then nutrients, such as your B vitamins, vitamin E, and much more for phase one. And then in phase two, it contains all the sulfur-based amino acids, such as um, taurine, and it contains methionine and all the things that help uh, like N-acetylcysteine to convert to glutathione. You don't need to know what any of that means. It's basic, but basically what it means is that you're giving your body the nutrients it needs, the raw material, to move these pathogens and toxins like pesticides and um, estrogen enhancers from the environment, heavy metals, viruses, even things like pollen out of your body to a much faster degree. And that's what your liver is meant to do. So the functional medicine detox that we use is through Equalife. You're welcome to look at the ingredients and choose the, your favorite company. And the sauna that we use is at stephencabral.com slash resources. Got a bunch of different saunas there. Again, I don't own any of, the, any of the sauna companies, but there's all different price ranges for those. The jumping up and down, that's basically free. The detox costs less than a typical week of food. And you can see exactly how to do it at stephencabral.com slash detox. It literally just kind of walks you through the process. But this is the 
easiest and most straightforward steps. Now, there are more complicated steps that I can help to share in the future. I'm happy to do that, but the goal is to get moving, right? The goal is to start with these first steps, get some relief, begin to feel a little bit better, get some quick wins, and then you can move on to those next levels and those next steps. If you believe that there might be hormonal imbalances or too high of inflammation in the body, you can always run an inflammation test or a hormones test or even a gut health test at stephencabral.com slash shop. That just takes you over to Ecolife. That's our integrative health practice. We help people all over the world. And you're welcome to go with the big five labs or maybe the starter kit in order to begin to find out what your underlying root causes are. The bottom line is we are here to help. Feel free to leave a comment or a question. We'll absolutely get back to you. We appreciate you being a part of this community, a part of the show. Feel free to, of course, like and subscribe. Every day there's a brand new concept. And for today's show notes with the top 10, those will be at stephencabral.com slash 3156. Do feel free to share it with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the day. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.